Food Heals Podcast, episode 275. I live that cleansing lifestyle. And I feel like that has really been the catalyst of staying healthy and putting myself into remission for Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism and cancer free and all of that, as well as like anti aging. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In real cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat and stress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately. All right. Welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. Today, co-host Leslie Durso and I are chatting with cancer survivor and holistic nutritionist Alyssa Goodman. After battling cancer herself, she watched cancer take her husband's life too soon. Using the lessons that she learned throughout her life, she created SOUP, which is the acronym for Superfoods Organic, Uniquely Designed, Prepared with Love, which is a five-day food cleanse. And she created the Cleanse Your Body, Cleanse Your Life 21-Day online program. I can't wait to share her incredible healing journey with you. We had such a blast here in the Food Heals podcast studio. But first, Food Heals Nation, you know that I love traveling with my Organifi green juice packs. They are convenient. They keep me healthy. They keep me hydrated. They are easy to use. They're full of detoxifying herbs, which is perfect when you're on the go, when you're getting off a plane, when your immune system is down, all the things. And you know, I'm obsessed with ending my day with the Organifi Gold. It helps me sleep. It helps me detox and it's delicious. And just in time for fall, they have it in their pumpkin spice flavor. Perfect for fall. You know, I ordered that as soon as I saw it and it was like the most comforting and delicious latte ever. So go check that out. And then this summer, I also discovered their latest product, which is the Organifi Glow, which just makes your face glow from the inside out. They launched it in June. Really excited to share that with you because you can build collagen naturally, um, plant-based collagen. It uses nature's most potent superfoods. And I know collagen is in everything these days. It's super trendy, but it's almost never vegan. It's not plant-based. But thankfully, Organifi Glow is plant-based. It's vegan. It's organic. It's gluten-free. It's soy-free. And it's keto-friendly for all my ketos out there. And it tastes like this delicious summery raspberry lemonade. So it's just really nice. Have it at the pool. Have it during a hot day. It's still hot here in LA. I don't know where you are, but some of you are experiencing fall and some of us are still in the heat of summer. But it's a great drink all around. It's loaded with hydrating aloe vera, rose hips. It's a potent antioxidant, high in vitamin C, mushroom, bamboo, silica. This is all necessary for collagen formation. It's got potent DNA repairing ingredients. So definitely check it out if you're ready to nourish your skin and reclaim its natural radiance. And of course, you know that I scored an exclusive discount code for you. Organifi has a special offer for Food Heals Nation only. Go to OrganifiShop.com. Use the coupon code FOODHEALS. You're going to get 20% off your first order. Plus, you can actually get a subscription so you never run out. So my stuff comes to me once a month. I never have to think about it. It just comes. And it's enough for for 30 days, but you also have a little bit extra left over for friends. So that's how I roll. So it's a really great thing to have coming to you monthly. So again, OrganifiShop.com, coupon code FOODHEALS. All right, next up, our interview with Alyssa. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. She is the glowing face of a fresher plant-based movement that refuses to compromise style for sustainability. And she's the vegan chef at the Four Seasons Putamita. You have heard her on the show multiple times. Please welcome today's co-host, Leslie Durso. I'm so happy to be here for today's episode. So happy to have you and Pepe. Yeah, little dog is joining us. You guys look so cute. He's asleep in my lap. I know. Which will stay for the next hour. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Perfect. And our guest today is a cancer survivor, a lifestyle cleanse expert, and is committed to helping you find joy and good health, plus help you renew, recharge, rejuvenate, and maintain your healthy lifestyle. Please welcome today's guest, Alyssa Goodman. Thank you. I am always so excited to do these. So I'm major excited to meet both of you, who I haven't met before, which I'm shocked that I, I haven't met you, I right? Know, I it's, know. It feels so strange. I've seen your stuff in 
Irawan and M Cafe for years. So I can't believe we haven't crossed paths until now. So I'm so glad that you are here and this is all working out. I know. So take us back because you have quite a story. When Leslie and I were reading about it earlier before you came just to prepare, we had quite a visceral reaction. And I would love for you to take us back and tell us how you got into this movement of wellness and cleansing. Well, first I'll I'll say to you know I'm 59 years old, so wow, I know you look incredible. I, I thought she was wow. younger than me. Oh, I only wow. want to say that because what I love is that I try to own my age. I try. No, I don't. Are we love. turning this into a skincare yeah. episode? Because I feel like we should make I this a skincare episode. I don't, I don't okay. love that I'm going to be turning 60, but. I feel the best I've ever felt. So I love the fact that I get to represent like an older group of women, you know, in their 50s and maybe in their 60s. I mean, they probably hate you, though, because you (laughs) look 30 years younger than all of them. (laughs) I hope not. All my life growing up, I actually was not the healthiest kid. Came into the world and my immune system was low. I had a low white blood cell count. So I ended up having to get these blood shots every 28 days. I don't even know how that long when it went on, but it went on, it seemed like forever. And I was always sick, even with those blood shots. So I got every type of virus, bacterial infection. I had digestive issues. I mean, the list is endless. I had mono, strep, tonsillitis, you know, not once, but multiple times, chicken pox. So mm-hmm. I also had, you probably read, my parents were very, very type A. They were go-getters. They were movers and shakers. And it was really disturbing because they ran circles around me. They Mm -hmm. just outran me every day. They got up at five. They worked out. By the time I was, you know, rolling out of bed at eight or nine, I mean, they had done 50 things, you know, off their list and they had worked out and you know, taking care of so much. And I always felt behind the eight ball. So I not only was always sick, but I also kind of, because of that, had this chronic fatigue issue. I also felt emotionally not worthy. Mm. That sucked. I didn't realize how much it sucked until later in my life. And I still tried to climb the corporate ladder, you know, went to college, went to New York, was in the advertising marketing business, you know, just wanted to make everybody like make them proud of me. Um, Even though I wasn't really following my passion or my purpose, I went into the advertising business and just worked like a dog, as you can imagine, and got sick all the time in New York. And I met my husband and he was from New York, from Queens. And I said, I'll never forget, I said, hey, let's think about maybe moving west. And we were living on the west side of New York and in the city. And he's like, New Jersey? (laughs) What the hell? And I'm like, absolutely not. California. He had never been to California. He'd never seen the Pacific Ocean. And yeah, he just was like, what? So I just said, there's a you know, nicer life, maybe it's slower, just maybe it's healthier. I just don't see myself raising kids in the city Mm -hmm. and living this pace. It was really getting to me. So we did, we moved West and his job relocated him, which he was lucky about. But six months into moving here, basically, or maybe it was a longer year into moving here. And I had a job with Vogue magazine in advertising marketing. I thought it was like the best, the end all. It was a horror show. Mm -hmm. And I was diagnosed with cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma. And basically, it was a wake up call. And it scared the shit out of me. Of course, because it was just that culmination of all those illnesses, not ever getting it right. And not figuring out really how to heal myself. And no one else was helping me along the way. Doctors or whoever I went to didn't really know what to do with me. Can you tell us a little bit about what Hodgkin's lymphoma means? It is cancer of the lymphatic system. So my lymphatic system probably was backed up. You know, I think right now that all this stuff that I've learned over the years, I had a lot of viral infections. So I think my organs were toxic with viruses, Mm -hmm. with bacteria, with toxins with pesticides with heavy metals i know i got tested for all that and they did have a lot of that but in those days no one was really sort of focusing on that right so did that i went ahead the doctors were saying hey you're gonna have to do chemo you don't have kids yet so we might have to freeze your eggs 
this is the first session of talking to the doctor about my cancer. Do you have a donor? We might have to do a donor transplant. And I was like, whoa, this is like so crazy. We hadn't mm-hmm. even staged the cancer yet. That's how doctors talk to you. They mm-hmm. scare the shit out of, of you. Of course they right? do. Scare tactics, 100%. And so I ended up seeing three doctors. The last doctor I didn't really want to go to, I went because a friend said, hey, you, I want you to go see this guy at St. John's. And he was remarkable. He sat me down. It was staged by then. It was always stage one. So it was an early stage. Mm-hmm. And... I didn't really quite know what that meant, but I think I was a bit relieved. But he sat me down and he said, you know, are you happy? Wow. Yeah. He goes, are you doing what you love? Are you in a relationship you love? Mm. You know, I'm like, wait, why is this doctor asking me these emotional questions? This shouldn't matter, right? Right. right. And I just burst into tears. I was hysterical. I was like, I'm so miserable. I really don't love my job. I really just don't love me. Like, I'm just always feeling like I'm playing catch up emotionally, physically, my whole entire life. And I don't know how much longer I could do it. Mm. So that was like the turning point. And it was like, wow. And he said, I think we can do this not so like we don't need to blast you with chemo. I so I chose not to do the chemo. I didn't go with him to actually do the treatment, but I did half the radiation that they recommended. And he said, you know, it's an early stage. You might even be able to do this by diet. I was a little bit terrified. So I thought I needed to do something. So I found someone to do half the radiation. Mm -hmm. And I did then change my diet. I did go 100% vegan. And I started doing yoga and I started to go into therapy. Thank God talk therapy. And I also just tried to also do some emotional therapy work and read a lot of books, as well as I did colonics and acupuncture and, you know, LA, we got all that out here and available. And I started juicing at Mm -hmm. Beverly Hills Juice. I actually became cancer free. And the cancers never come back. I got hypothyroidism because they radiated my thyroid. Uh, So I wasn't done with illnesses and ailments. Um, And then I was trying to get pregnant after the diagnosis and I had a bunch of miscarriages and Mm. that was most likely because of the hypothyroidism. And then once that was detected, I ended up getting pregnant with my first child. Wow. So thank you. And then after her, I ended up getting Hashimoto's. So after (laughs) I had the hyperthyroidism Hashimoto's, I dealt with that for 21 years. And I also had celiac because most people who have these issues have also another autoimmune disease. But I did go on to have two healthy girls at least I think they're healthy. <laughs> I don't know, growing up in LA, it's a little tricky. And then their dad passed away 11 years later. He had cancer. He had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Oh my God. And yeah, 11 you, years later, he was like 43. Can you tell us the difference between Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's? That is a really good question. I'm not sure I can totally okay. tell you like technically, but there's many more forms of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma than there are Hodgkin's lymphoma. There's like follicular and large B cell with non-Hodgkin's. So they're, I don't know why they're different, but his was definitely more aggressive and farther along. Mm. And uh, But he was so young and so strong so shocking that two of us would have cancer but and he ended up going the whole western route Mm. he didn't even want to entertain really the eastern or another philosophy or basically talking about emotions and all the you know frustration and stuff that he had been dealing with all his life and all the trauma he went through he didn't really want to go there he did and he didn't and he was a massive sugar eater not that sugar gives you cancer solely he ate a ton of animal protein breakfast lunch dinner he was an atkins guy like for years Mm -hmm. um they have fat and protein and all that not that that specifically also like well, clarify factorial it is all of these things are yeah. you know major contributors i'm right. so sorry for your I loss know. my girls were 10 and 7 when he passed away oh. and i was like oh shit what am i gonna do oh. and then my girlfriend was sitting with me at lunch a year later and she goes what about going back to school and learning about nutrition just so that you can get the girls healthy and yourself and learning about trauma because mm, yeah. I had been through trauma too and then that they had been through trauma yes. they were dealing with PTSD like crazy I mean a 7 and a 10 year old losing their father is a major trauma oh, I can't yeah. even imagine and if you look at the ACEs score which measures adverse childhood experiences it shows you by the data the more traumatic experience 
experiences you go through as a child lead to health outcomes in the future, such as getting disease, getting cancer, or ending up in jail in many cases, because you don't deal with things. And so then you act out later in life. It's fascinating. Yeah. So I'm glad you went on this path because it's like, I didn't know there was stages of grief. You know, when I was losing my parents to cancer, I had no idea that my dad hadn't healed from massive traumas one after another after another. Well, this man didn't deal with those things. Right. So I'm so glad that this original doctor from, you said St. John's? Yeah. Yeah. Radiologist at St. John's. Do you love your life? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what sounds like it was the catalyst to all of this. It was. I just love that. It was. It was just to force me to take a really hard look because we all just are told okay this is the way life is right yeah. we've mm-hmm. been dealt this hand so we have to deal with it right life is tough life isn't fair there are these things that we are told sure but we have the tools to choose whether or not that's true for us right yeah, yeah. and change them absolutely yeah. we can change the direction which is i think so fascinating in these days that we're yeah. dealing in because yeah. there's so much out there for us to change the direction mm-hmm. emotionally spiritually physically yeah so i went back to school and got certified in eastern and western nutrition i did wow. chinese and Ayurvedic and I did herbal remedies I love like herbal remedies that's kind of what I absolutely love I love plants I love plant medicine that'll be a whole other podcast and uh, (laughs) I just got into it and loved it. And then when I graduated, I just got so lucky because Cafe Gratitude had just come down from San Francisco Mm -hmm. to Largemont, was their first location. And my friend actually had me create their cleanse Mm -hmm. program. So I did that for about four and a half years. And then M Cafe had me do the same thing for them. It was a macrobiotic cleanse. So it was just different. Two of my favorite (laughs) restaurants in LA, P.S. I know. I know. Mine too. I absolutely lived at M Cafe forever but that was the first one right that kale salad oh yeah i know leslie can make this at home in two seconds but <laughs> that peanut butter kale salad or whatever it is i don't think i've had this kale it's salad it's the best thing i've oh. ever had all right leslie I need to can make it at home and, and i'll never buy it again but peanut butter kale salad it's like peanut kale salad it is so good and crunchy and delicious okay sorry they oh. massage the kale it's oh. like you know it's like, like soft mm-hmm. kale yeah soft mm-hmm. kale yeah so that was really fun. I did that. And then I met the owners of Erewhon when they first took ownership. Mm-hmm. And then I created a cleanse for them, which lasted maybe six months at most. We just had them coming in to pick out their smoothie or their juice or their mm-hmm. salad or mm-hmm. their soup to take it home. They just wanted it all packaged and mm-hmm. delivered to them, which I understand. I created a couple of juices for them. So I still have a juice there. Yeah, um, I've I seen it. The thyroid juice, yes, <laughs> um, which has dandelion greens in it. Then I have a salad at Gratitude now still. It's called I'm Cleansed. So that's another dandelion. That's a good salad. Yeah. I've had that one. The dandelion greens and yeah, the chickpea tofu. Mm-hmm. Yum. Yeah. So I just got really lucky. And then I just like, I wrote a book called Cancer Hacks. It was just about my story and my husband's story about how we, what we did right and what we did wrong Mm -hmm. during our process. And then it just kind of everything unfolded and I got super, super lucky. And I just absolutely can't get enough of this stuff. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Me three. I know. I was telling you before we were on the show about what a big cleanser I have and how I have different cleanses for different things. Like when I'm at a conference or when I'm traveling versus when I'm just tired at home and I'm working too hard, I do different cleanses for different things and I love resetting my body and like getting my brain power back and getting my body back after you know we can't be perfect all the time so it's a great way to kind of keep your body resetting all of the time and not let chronic debilitating disease build up inside of us and there's an emotional component to the cleansing too. I love that you were saying that because (laughs) I can so relate to you I mean I still today don't see a lot of people or hear a lot of people doing that resetting and cleansing and it doesn't have to be hardcore cleansing right right? which I used to think So let me tell you that I used to think that a juice cleanse or any kind of cleanse, like a liver cleanse meant hardcore green juice and supplements. And that was it. Fasting, fasting, fasting. And yes, it can be that. But it can also be really gentle and really easy because a lot of people cannot do that. Okay, absolutely. And should not do that. Mm -hmm. I can. Right. But not everyone can. And so there's so many easy ways to cleanse with smoothies and soups and juices and salads. Just give your body a reset from processed food and sugar and salt and all the things. Well, Absolutely. Just eating clean. 
too. I mean, if you're eating processed food all the time, just simply eating clean right. is going to reset gonna your body like crazy. Right. And I would hope that that would lead to you eating clean most of the time. <laughs> at least. Yeah, because you'll feel good yeah. right after a certain so amount much of time. Better. Yeah, yeah. Unless you have that emotional attachment to the food that you don't deal with, and so then you always go back to the foods that you crave because it's a comfort. Or you know, when you were little, you always got candy if you got a cut or something like that. So you have this like relationship to food that it's a reward for when things are hard you know all those things or like the whole and I've done this a million times so I'm not knocking it but you eat Ben and Jerry's after a breakup like yes those are things but if we don't heal those emotions that are tied to the food then we're going to go back to them Can can you speak to that Yes, emotional eating is huge. And you're right. A lot of us growing up, I know growing up in my day, we did associate with being taken care of and loved with food. Right. So, and also, I don't know about you guys, you're a little younger than me, but when I was growing up, it was like, finish your plate. Oh, oh, yeah. oh that, right? I'm Italian American. <laughs> still finish your plate. What's up with that? Like, well, is yeah. that so crazy? I know. Yeah, and I stopped eating meat when I was seven, and it was, I fell asleep many a night at the dinner table because I wasn't allowed to get up until I finished everything on my plate and I refused to finish the meat on my plate and (laughs) so I would fall asleep at the table. Oh, that is so wild. They leave you there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, my mom would, after my dad went to sleep, my mom would always come get me and yeah. I mean, we all love, most of us love sugar, of course, and that is a killer. And there's definitely with dairy, there's science behind it's such a food that we crave when we eat it, you know, we can't get enough, you know, gluten is also I think another one that it really does do a number on us. Mm -hmm. I have a five day soup cleanse that I cook and deliver to 100 people every month. It's plant based. And it is 45 different vegetables in a week. And it's sugar free, gluten free, dairy free, no processed foods does have some legumes and beans, but they're all sprouted or soaked. And a little bit of quinoa. That's I think our only and sometimes we do some wild rice in our salads. Mm -hmm. But you know, people after five days, you can reset, they feel so much better, like you were saying, and they have more energy. And so I'm just trying to get them to get over the hump of these, you know, sugar cravings or this emotional eating. Yeah, you really have to detox it out. Yeah, it's withdrawals, kind of go cold turkey, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, sometimes, and the caffeine too. So they I don't necessarily tell them they have to go off the caffeine, but they usually do. So that's also a good nice little break. And I think this sounds absolutely delicious, and I want to try it. (laughs) And let's talk about detoxing, because one of the things that drives me crazy is when you see, there's a lot of articles out there that want to kind of debunk the myth that we need to detox. And the truth is, is that they claim, which is true, that the body is designed to detox itself. Yes, it is. And it absolutely does a great job of that. But we are bombarded by more toxins than ever in human history Mm -hmm. than we were before, besides what we are lifestyle choosing to put in our body, things that we cannot control, such as our environment, such as Mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, such as heavy metals, such as what's in our water. And so I think the point of this is that Our body can only do so much. And so if we're not living this holistic lifestyle where we're eating organic, vegan produce, fruits and vegetables every single day, we all need a detox. You know, we're not all doing yoga on top of a mountain, sweating it out every day. And even if we are, there's still environmental toxins up there, right? Right. At the top of the damn mountain. Mm -hmm. Right. So we do need a reset. We do need a detox. And if you're not feeling well, there is always something that you can do to bring your body back to its natural set point, to homeostasis. Amen. Yes. And that, I mean, I think for me, I live that cleansing lifestyle. And I feel like that has really been the catalyst of staying healthy and putting myself into remission for Hashimoto's and mm-hmm. hypothyroidism and cancer free and all of that, as well as like anti aging. You know, my energy level is really good. I don't sleep the greatest lately because emotional things have been going on. But Honestly, I just feel good about my life and I feel good about me. I think it took a lot of years to really get to that place of loving myself and all that. And I think that also is like a huge thing in terms of really taking ownership of what you're saying, you know, your health and making sure that you are sort of living this a little bit of a cleansing lifestyle. And it doesn't mean like hardcore juices and every day and just water fast and all of that or even prolonged 
which I'm sure you've heard of, which people are suffering (laughs) through five days of powdered soups. Mm -hmm. For me, I love the intermittent fasting. It doesn't work for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Giving your digestive system that break of 14, 16 hours. And I also love juicing. I mean, I've juiced since I had diagnosed with cancer and I juice greens like almost every day. I don't do any fruit Mm -hmm. in my juices because of the sugar, but I do a lot of greens and I switch them up. And even the celery juice, which was big deal in the last couple of years or last oh, year god in the, the medical last medium. six months you haven't <laughs> yes. been able to find organic celery anywhere i know it's the so entire crazy. city of los angeles is sold out of celery thank you <laughs> anthony williams right. everybody is juicing straight celery mm-hmm. which has a lot of beneficial properties mm-hmm. to it, it has oh, a lot of I'm, minerals I, right i've done it i'm i'm, I'm, I'm one of those <laughs> part people. of the problem here i people. was the one buying you know 16 stalks of celery <laughs> at so a you time. believe in it i wanted to experience experience it and see how I felt. I feel like my skin cleared up a lot. I felt good. I felt yeah. good. Okay. I didn't see anything massively drastic, but I also eat a very clean diet thing. to begin right. with. Right. But I will say I love the theory of intermittent fasting, but it drives me crazy. I'm bad on it because Why? I don't do caffeine. I haven't done caffeine in like 15 years. So when I deprive my body of fuel, okay. it goes a little crazy. Yeah. And so like I would get the shakes and I'd get yeah. real hangry and I couldn't focus anymore because I was so hungry. It's but not I, for everyone. So it doesn't work for you. No, but I just also shortened it. I try yeah. and eat dinner around five or six and then I don't eat again until like five or six the next day. So it's like a 12 hour fasting instead of 16 or 18 hour. (laughs) I think that's just as good. Totally. Well, all of these things have to kind of work within your diet. Your diet has to work within your lifestyle too. You have to listen to your body. And whereas I recommend intermittent fasting for other people, and I think that everyone should try it, it just wasn't my jam necessarily. I agree. But I would love to talk too because you're talking about all this juicing and I know yeah. you're like the juicing yeah. queen <laughs> and get your input on juicing versus smoothieing and eating whole foods and why the benefit of juicing it or the non-benefits of juicing it. I know. Well, one thing with the Anthony William thing, I think what's cool is he has made juicing popular again. Yeah. Again. So it that keeps going in cycles. It does. <laughs> it totally does. It was smoothies for a long time, right? And mm-hmm. juices were kind of a pain in the ass. Now that people have juicers. So I just love the idea of juicing because also I'm a purist. So I juice it and I drink it right away. Yes. So I'm not like going to sorry, Erewhon or Creation and buying them off the shelf. I'll go to Creation and have them make me one or Earth Bar. Or mm-hmm. There's so many places. I yeah. would do that because I think it's freshest and holds the most nutrients. Right, I agree. before it gets oxygenated. I think so. Yeah. I think that even cold press, I'm not so sure if it's so pure and retains its nutrients. Right. Totally agree. But so I do juice and I just think it's a liquid vitamin, IV of vitamins, minerals, and it detoxes your blood. Yeah. You know, certain greens do. And I just think that I am t- always telling clients, I want you to eat eight to 10 cups of veggies a day and their eyes glaze over like, how the hell am I going to do that? So with my salad and my roasted vegetable f- with my dinner, that is not even come close. That's going to maybe be maybe three or four cups, right? Mm-hmm. So with the juicing, you totally totally get those cups of veggies in. I love that. On an empty stomach, you know, going right into your bloodstream, I'm a big fan of trying to get nutrients into the mitochondria of the cells. Mm-hmm. And I think there's no science that I know of behind the juicing in terms of that, but it seems like it can get there because you're not digesting the food, you're absorbing it better. So I think hopefully, you know, it helps with that getting into the cells. But I also love smoothies. So smoothies are great because we do need the fiber. So some I think it's great to do a day of juice, smoothie, soups, salad. That's like a perfect day for me. That's my jam. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so like the diet. smoothies are great. I just use a really amazing greens powder mm-hmm. called Pure Synergy. It's certified organic. Okay. The gentleman who's been working on it since like 1977 for a long time, it has a little bit of everything in it. So sometimes you have to be a little wary because... Because, you know, these superfoods out there with like all the mushrooms and all the adaptogens and mm-hmm. then also the greens, all the chlorella, spirulina, all that stuff might be a little much for you, but it's a beautiful powder. It's certified organic. So I throw that in with nut milk and some maybe frozen spinach and cauliflower rice and some berries and MCT oil mm-hmm. and, and hemp seeds. Mm-hmm. I just do a lot of pure like protein sources in the vegan world. I mean, in that way, I don't do like a protein powder. 
all the time. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, I do that. I mean, I just, I really think that both are great. It's just whatever works for you. I think mm-hmm. smoothies are a meal replacement. Juices are not. A hundred percent. They're just I like. I totally yeah. could not agree with you more. Now, I do have a question. <laughs> Can you invent a self-cleaning juicer? Because, <laughs> my God, if that's not the most obnoxious thing in the entire universe to clean. <laughs> It is. It is. And I don't know if I do it right because I throw it in the dishwasher. Are you worried about the blade dulling? I just get a new blade. Every, <laughs> oh, so, that's a good oh, solution. Yeah. That's I smarter mean, though. Right. It does dull. You're absolutely oh right. Oh my God, because so, I hand wash mine every and day. And you should it's hand wash it. Such a pain. You're, you're absolutely really right. Such a pain. And it is a pain. That's Much why easier to clean a blender. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> really veggies, fruits and veggies are where it's at. I oh, mean, 100%. It is our life force mm-hmm. and especially the vegetables. They detoxify the body, especially the cruciferous veggies. I mean, mm-hmm. those are just some of the most powerful veggies, right? With the sulfur and how toxins attach to that sulfur, sticky substance in our excreted out of the body. I mean, you can't get much better than that. Nope. The dandelion greens, which we were talking about, is one of my favorite things in the entire world. I had to get used to it because it's really bitter. Yes, right? it is. So, But I'm telling you, like I grew up with broccoli, Rob. So right. it was kind of like, oh, it's <laughs> no like, brainer it's for you. bitter like that. <laughs> yeah. Dandelion is so powerful for the liver. It's not even funny. And we do have to eat a lot of it and juice a lot of it to actually have it work. It's like something like six grams, mm-hmm. which we don't nearly get to. But there's dandelion root tea, which like one tea bag has 1,500 milligrams. So if you did- And then I clients, don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind that nearly as much yeah. as I do the raw. But I also to like get started in daily dandelion greens if you're kind of scared of them and you're scared that we just said that they were super bitter. <laughs> yeah. Try just, you know, doing a small handful cut up in your salad with yeah. and mix it with spinach and other lettuces so that it's kind of a little bit more hidden in there. Totally. And then just keep adding more into it until you can kind of like yeah. get used to it. I mean, because I feel like the liver, the gut, all of that is so crucial and the colon to detoxify and mm-hmm. cleanse. So another thing that I see a lot of people not focusing on the liver, mm-hmm. a lot worse focusing on the gut right now, which I think is fabulous, but we haven't quite got to the liver as much as we should. You know, some of these things, milk thistle and dandelion and burdock root and just things that are great for the liver, I think we should be taking on a daily basis. I you know, could right? not agree more. And then the colon... <laughs> I have people coming to me and going, oh, yeah, I went to the bathroom a couple times last week. Right, right. Oh, my God, that always blows my mind. Because I stopped eating meat when I was seven. So I've basically been regular my entire life. Right, And when right. I meet people and they're like, oh, yeah, I go to the bathroom like once or twice a week. I'm like, what? I don't know what that means. Like, what? that's so unhealthy. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, a little TMI. But it's like, you should be going multiple times a day. Well, that's another reason why the Anthony Williams thing is good because it does help with that. And if you're not used to that, mm-hmm. it can really, really help people. But then yes. again, you know, it's also a little too trendy for my taste. <laughs> but I think it really can help people in that I respect know. who aren't used to that. Well, ladies... I really enjoy talking about juicing and cleansing and detoxing, but let's take a quick break and come right back. And I want to talk about some of Alyssa's emotional healing tools that she used in conjunction and what you're teaching your kids about trauma and healing. Yeah. All right. So we'll be right back. Food Heals fam, today we're talking about physical and emotional healing from disease, and I wanted to shout out a resource that I'm currently obsessed with when it comes to our mental and emotional health. You know, I'm all about having the tools in our healing toolbox so that we're able to deal with anything that life throws at us with grace and ease, and that's where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp, which is H-E-L-P, not health, BetterHelp with a P, offers affordable private online counseling anytime, anywhere. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? I know I felt this way many times throughout my life, whether it was unresolved issues from losing my parents to cancer in my 20s, you know, my trauma, or maybe it was just that jerk who cut me off in traffic. I've often found myself feeling sad, alone, and just blocked from achieving my life's work. And there's been moments when I felt like there was nowhere to turn. Have you ever felt like that? But I want to let you know, Food Heals Nation, that there is hope. BetterHelp is here for you. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And there's no wait time. There's no waiting until they have an appointment open two weeks to a month later. You can start communicating with your therapist in under 24 hours. This isn't a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely 
online, anywhere, anytime. And there's a broad range of expertise and BetterHelp's counselor network, which may not always be locally available in many areas. So this is something you can do anywhere you are. And the service is available for clients worldwide. It's not just US-based. So anywhere you are, you can access BetterHelp at any time. You can even log into your account at any time. You can send a message to your counselor when you need something and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. You can also schedule weekly video or phone sessions. You won't ever have to sit and wait around in an uncomfortable waiting room or deal with parking or any of that as you would with that traditional therapy model. And BetterHealth is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so that it makes it easy and free to change counselors if they're just not resonating or if they just don't get you. That's okay. You can change. You can find the right person. And it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. So this is something that anyone can utilize right now. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today, as do I. So you can check out their website, betterhelp.com. Again, betterhelp.com slash food heals and join over 500,000 people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And if you use my link, betterhelp.com slash food heals, you're going to get 10% off your first month. Such a good deal. I'm so grateful to BetterHelp for giving us that deal. And if you want to learn more, go check out their reviews. That's at betterhelp.com slash reviews. See what other people are saying. See what resonates. Check it out for yourself. Let me know how it goes. I think it's an amazing resource and a great healing tool to add to your healing toolbox. So check it out again, betterhelp.com slash food heals. Get 10% off. Now back to my interview with Alyssa. You are listening to the Food Hills Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. So in our earlier show, what we talked about was Alyssa's journey and really what happened to you with having cancer. Your husband, unfortunately, passing away from cancer, which obviously, you know, is so close to my heart because I lost both of my parents to cancer. And I can't imagine, you know, losing the father of your children. And we went through a lot of holistic ways to heal and nutrition and the way that you actually healed yourself with nutrition. So make sure you listen to that episode to find out exactly what Alyssa did. But one thing that we don't address all the time when we're talking about cancer and chronic disease is the emotional component and have you dealt with your trauma? Because if you're eating all organic, all vegan and doing all the right things and having all the supplements, juices, smoothies, avoiding sugar, alcohol, salt, you can still get sick if you have emotional traumas that you haven't dealt with because it's all interconnected. And that's what Alyssa had to do. That's what I've had to do. I'm sure Leslie has experienced that as well. Absolutely. So Alyssa, can you take us through some of the tools that you have used to heal your own traumas? I know you're helping your children heal their trauma of losing their father. Take us through some of those tools. Well, I love the fact that because we live in LA, you know, energy healing and Reiki and all of that has been become very popular. And I started working with energy healers about 10 years ago. And when I went to my first one, she completely changed my life. I remember walking out of the session with her, it was like two and a half hours. And I felt like I had just had 10 years of therapy, Mm. talk therapy. I mean, I think talk therapy can be great because we do need to process our emotions of what we're feeling or else we kind of take them into our life and, you know, manifest them into potential disease. But the also energetic, you know, deeper places of our body where we hold trauma in our cells, in our DNA, in our tissues, right? Or even our organs, as we talked about in the earlier episode, those things need to be released. And I think energy healers, the good ones know how to get in and really balance you and release that from your body. Body, and that's really crucial. And also Reiki does that. I actually do a lot of that with my girls. I have pushed them to see those healers when they were young. And it was really great for them to actually really deal with those traumas at an earlier age rather than what I did at a later age. Right, me too. <laughs> but I realized through the journey of I've noticed with my clients, when I sit down and talk to them, the ones who have cancer, the ones who have autoimmune, hardcore digestive issues, they all had trauma in their early, early years. I mean, I don't know if 
you know out there, Facebook Live, that the first seven years of your life, your subconscious is fully downloaded 100%. So the three of us here are barely conscious. We're like, (laughs) you know, 95% unconscious, 5% conscious, basically, which is, isn't that mind boggling? Yeah, it really is. I mean, we think we're so conscious, but we have the subconscious thoughts and these feelings and that are running through our bodies all the time. Mm -hmm. And I found that so fascinating. It was Dr. Lisa Rankin who wrote this book, Mind Over Medicine, which was quite fascinating that I read years ago. So when I sit down and talk to my clients, I do ask them about their birth and how they came out. Was it a loving environment they came into? Was it safe? You know, how was the birth? And also, what were those first seven years like? Did they have some trauma? Some people have a hard time like really locating it because some people feel like it has to be death or divorce or sexual abuse, something hardcore. But it can be just someone betraying you. Mm -hmm. It can be being made fun of on the playground. Absolutely. You're right. I mean, that probably happens so often. All of the time. Right. Bullied or something. Bullied, yeah. Yeah. So it's just you hold on to that. And then you have these feelings of you're not safe. And I believe that when you go into that feeling of not feeling safe, you go into the fight or flight mode. And I feel like that's really how I live my life. I never really felt safe. So I was always in fight or flight. And fight or flight, of course, releases all the adrenaline, cortisol through your body. And I don't think it ever stopped. It was just a continual, just pushing those adrenals to the max. Mm -hmm. And then everything started to burn out. And I think, you know, until you really get a hold of that and realize, wow, you know, how am I really living my life? Sitting back and just taking notice of how you're functioning and what you're doing is what you're doing really what you want to be doing. Do you love what you do? Are you in a relationship that you love? Do you feel safe with that relationship? Are you in friendships that, you know, it's a lot of actually dissecting your life. I think that is really the cornerstone of health and wellness and thriving. I mean, I think that cancer comes from a lot of emotional grief and trauma and we were talking earlier about a book called Radical Remission by Mm -hmm. Kelly Turner she did her PhD for 10 years interviewing stage 4 cancer cases and they mostly all healed through holistic remedies they didn't do any western drugs and basically she came up with 10 modalities and 7 of them were emotional that these people were able to heal I mean that's incredible because when I came into this space of learning the body is designed to heal itself if given the tools that it needs to do so the first thing I discovered was nutrition was detoxing was cleansing, was giving the cells all the phytonutrients it needed to fight off cancer and chronic disease. And it wasn't for a few years after that, that I was like, oh, now I'm eating so well, I'm sleeping better. And I was feeling amazing, but there was still next level stuff that needed to happen. And I remember someone saying to me, well, you know, what about the trauma and emotional and the healing and the seven stages of grief? And I was like, I don't know, whatever, (laughs) like, Okay. I had never done it. I didn't know there were stages of grief. When my parents died, I buried it and I moved Mm -hmm. on with my life. I did not deal with it. I cried a few times, but Mm -hmm. it was not, there was no emotional release. There was no stages Mm -hmm. of grief that were recognized. There was no journaling. So it took me years to implement those practices. And then once I did, it was like, I was awake. Now I'm eating better. Now I'm releasing things. I'm not storing things. You know when you've got something going on (laughs) is when you're driving and you're like, you a-hole, you just cut me off, blah, blah, blah. How dare you? You're really mad at that guy. You don't know that guy. You never met that guy or gal. The reason that you're angry is because you have undealt with emotions within yourself. You're angry at a person. You're angry at a situation. You're playing the victim of your circumstances, whatever it may be. So if I'm mad in traffic, that's how I know. Girls got to do the work. Yep. Who are you really upset with? Who do you need to forgive? Do you need to forgive yourself? Right? But that all took so much time for me to learn. So I'm so happy that you are teaching your children. Let's go to the how. So how do you do that? If these people are watching or listening right now and they're saying, okay, great. Well, I don't know if I have that or not. If I do have that, how do I deal with it? How do I deal with it? That's a really good question. It is tricky. I mean, there are really great workshops. I know that reading books like Lisa Rankin's book, and she also has a fear based about fear. Fear is a big one for all of us. Mm -hmm. She has a couple of mind over medicine, and I think it's um, how to deal with fear or looking fear head on. Those are great books to like learn how to release some of this trauma. I've mostly done it through energy healers. Energy healers who I've worked with do work all across the country and all over the world. They actually do calls where they don't really have to see you physically and they can tap into you like crazy 
in terms of what is really going on and what you need to work on. Wow. You know, they can do it while you're sleeping, which is beautiful. Mm-hmm. They can release things in your body while you're sleeping. And I've had a handful that are fantastic over the years. Yeah. Also, thank God for the meditation apps. And some of those, like Unplug has a great mm-hmm. app. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of great. And you can like actually get in and do journaling is another thing that is really crucial. In the morning, I have a practice where I get up in the morning and I don't look at my phone or my emails. And I sit and I meditate just for not very long, maybe 15 minutes. And then I journal about, you know, just letting go of things that are bothering me that I want to let go of during the day or what I want to bring in. The biggest question I ask my clients is, do you love yourself? I have to say, hardly anybody says yes. I mean, usually people just start crying when they hear that question because they're like, I don't know if I do. And cultivating self-love is a practice. It's a daily practice, I think. Right. That was a couple years ago was so profound for me. I had to really wake up to that because that was one thing missing. Yeah. I thought I was doing everything right. Like you said, like you're doing, I was eating right. I was doing you yoga, know, yeah, yeah, hiking and shit. Crystals and uh, <laughs> you know, dry brushing and, you know, the energy All the healers. physical things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The meditating. But then when it came to the self-love, it was like, ooh. Mm -hmm. That is not there. And once I did capture that, everything changed in my life. Mm. So my relationships with my friends and my family and just work and then also myself, it was like the weight that was lifted off my shoulders was mammoth Yeah, because I was such a perfectionist and type A and all of that. Recovering perfectionist, I get you. (laughs) So... To really get into letting go of trauma, I know talk therapy can be great. And if you're interested in some of the healers that I've used, you can definitely send in a note and like I can give those names out. I'd love to because they're pretty fabulous and they do Skype calls and Zoom calls and they're really great people. So they can really get you in touch with your spiritual and emotional side. And I love having assistance. I think that's really important. But I also love having tools that you can do on your own without having a scheduled call. So if something happens to me, let's say, or someone does something that I find that makes me angry or upset or whatever, I try to find the root cause of what upset that so I don't have to spend my day going crazy over it, right? So I do write and burn. And then I end mm. with music. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. So yeah. I write it all down. I'm so mad at you because you did this to me. And blah, blah, blah. All the crap. Let it out, let it out, let it out. Then you get rid of the pages. You can either rip them up, tiny little pieces, and like, you know, throw them away somewhere where no one can find them. Okay. Or you can literally burn them if you're in a safe space and you know how to burn without setting your house on fire. Because <laughs> it really just gets the energy out of you. Don't reread them. Don't let yeah. anyone else read them. The energy comes that's out true. of you. And then you find this peace. And then mm. I play my play playlist and I ball and I feel amazing. So I love that. One of the things that I've I've learned is like, okay, how do I give love to my inner child? And I just saw Oprah talking about this and she was literally like, you know, the problem is is that we are trying to treat ourselves as adults when the person who needs the healing is the little girl or little boy Mm. inside of us. And I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember her exact words, but it was something way more profound than that. But the point is is that I play a song for my little girl who was Mm. the one who lost mommy and daddy at a young age, whatever. And it's Little Miss and it's the best song ever. And I wish I could play it for you, but I want to play it on the podcast but you can't because you get in trouble so just go to spotify <laughs> go to little miss I'm and be downloading that yeah it's one of my favorite songs and i play it and i just give her so much love and when you mm. give that little girl little guy so much love you are cultivating the self-love that you were just talking about yeah. that gives it back to your adult self because right. you yeah. feel safe you, feel, you feel protected safe. yeah you feel forgiven you feel you know just joyful almost and so that's one of my practices for when i can't reach out to because i got Lisa Thomas, my DNA healer. I got my therapist who can prescribe medicine but doesn't, thank God. But I got my people. I've yeah, got my psychic. You got your tribe. I got my tribe of people. But sometimes something happens that day and they're not available. You don't have an appointment with them and you don't want to pay for something. It's true. And that's my go to. Sometimes you don't have access to these people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we do here in LA, I think more so than right, maybe right. some other parts of the country. But yeah. You're right. The write and burn is beautiful. Dr. Sadehi talks about that. Do you know oh, him? Oh, no, yeah. I don't know him. He talks about like 12 minutes, just 12 minutes yeah. for some reason, writing down every thought you have, but don't... Don't edit. Don't edit. Don't yeah, punctuate. 
you can you curse on there. Like no yeah. one's ever going to see this. This is not your journal that you keep to read later. No. Right. It's, it's to get rid of this it. Well, it's I love that that is something that everybody can do anywhere. Yeah. Like yes. you said, and it's affordable. It's nearly free. <laughs> it's free. It's free. Um, Get some paper and a pen. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's something that really anybody can do anywhere. And yeah. so it's such great advice. And the, the first time I saw the healer, the, she had me write down for like days until I got tired of it. The same thing that I was mad about. Yeah. So it didn't have to be new things. So it could have been just the same thing for days. And then it does release from you. It yeah. releases from your body eventually. When you get it down on paper, getting yeah. it down on paper is so profound. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can think about it in your head, but and you could type it on a computer, but it's not the same, is it? Right. And then that kind of brings me to like manifestation because I feel like everyone's like, write it down, make it happen, dream of it, and it will come. If you haven't dealt with that stuff, yeah. You cannot, yeah, can't you come. can't come from a place of manifestation if you're not coming from a place of gratitude and love. Mm-hmm. So how do you get to the place of gratitude and love? Write and burn or go talk to your healer. Right. Get to a space where you feel good about yourself, where you feel loving energy. And then you can actually manifest good health, good career, whatever the hell it is you want. Car, I don't care. Like That's the secret true. shit, you know? <laughs> because you, what we were saying earlier is if, you know, if you're not emotionally in a good place and you're calm and you have some inner peace and you have some love for yourself, all those things. You're not going to have them all the time, but you, at least if you're going to have a majority of the time would be amazing. And then you're at a place where you'll be able to absorb the food that you're eating, all yeah. this beautiful food, you know, mm-hmm. plant-based food, because you can sit down and eat a kale salad with all the healthy vegetables in it. And if you're stressed out, your digestive system is going to be shut down. Right. You know, it's not going to absorb and it's really not going to do what it's supposed to do for you. It's still better than the alternative, but it's the ultimate is being at that peaceful place. Absolutely. Type of peace. Agree. I have a picture of a little me. I was just realizing that Aww. that someone had told me to put on my counter um, when I was like six. And a healer had said, at six, something happened. And I put that picture of me. And I always am looking at her and trying to just really energetically send love. I love that. So I love that you brought that up because that is so important. And let's talk a little bit about resistance because I know for me, it took me a long time to get over my resistance <laughs> to this stuff. I was like, yeah. this shit doesn't work. No, I don't need this. I'm good. <laughs> And how a big one. are your kids receiving it? Because I bet there's a lot less resistance from them. I could be wrong, but no. wh- let's talk about resistance. Okay, well, okay, it's not wrong. Okay, I am wrong, so tell us. There is a lot of resistance. <laughs> My older one, I sent them to the healers early on, and they didn't really take to it. They thought it was just like hokey and right. like hocus pocus, <laughs> and they were thought it was really bizarre that someone was really actually telling them what their thoughts were and what, what they were feeling. I mean, I think it felt really invasive for them, and it also felt scary. Yeah, that some other I person feeling that right, way. Right, tap yeah. into that. So I personally did it too early in their <laughs> journey, and we. Definitely try to talk about all the trauma, and we cried a lot about what what had happened. So I didn't want them to have to hold back about it, but it was still it was still a long journey for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's always going to be. They're twenty four and twenty one today, and they're still dealing with PTSD from it because of course their grandfather just passed away five months ago, mm-hmm. and um, Sorry to hear that. when they basically heard, you know, he was sick. I mean, they go right into that mode. So I don't mm-hmm. know how. When when and if they will get to a place where they won't go strictly right into a terrified mode of, oh my God, this, yeah. you know, death might happen and someone else is sick and it's terrifying. So that is a tricky one. Hopefully as the older they get, they'll be able to like figure out, you know, a safe thing for them to do, yeah. to go to, so they don't go right into the PTSD of yeah, it all. I but um, there is a lot of resistance. Now, as they've gotten older, there's not as much resistance, and they have really grown leaps and bounds, you know, beyond whatever I thought they would in terms of this. And it's made them stronger yeah. and more resilient, of course, just like it's made you, you know, when we have this stuff happen to us early in our years. But they still have abandonment issues, and I think that's going to be tricky for a long period of time. I still have abandonment issues and I went to the school of loving yourself oh, University wow. of Santa Monica yeah. where you literally oh, yeah. you get a master's degree in spiritual psychology and all you do is self-love exercises all day long and all night and your wow. homework <laughs> is self-love and it's like it's a lot you guys I still have abandonment issues really? like but it's a practice just yeah. like everything we do healthy eating mindful eating yoga it's all a practice Yes. I, and I have resistance with a healthy eating, you know, and I have two stepsons as well. And when we would do one vegan night, because they're big animal protein eaters, which is, I'm not happy about, but the vegan night on Monday night, 
nobody was home. It was just Aww. my fiance and I, kids were all gone doing their thing, you know, so it was sad, but now it's better. Now it's better, but it took a lot of years. So there is definitely resistance. And my girls love juices now. Instead of coffee, they drink matcha. So there's some, there's some good stuff happening. Yeah. It's amazing. But yeah. Remember when we were in Italy, Leslie, and the first year, not this year, we would draw these angel cards every morning. And so we'd go around the table, we'd read our angel cards. It was really fun. You would always hear what you needed to hear. Well, three (laughs) out of five or six days of this, I got the same card. Was it only three days? Uh, it might have been four. I don't remember. It was unreal. I've it was, never seen anything like it. It was insane. And it drove me crazy. I was so mad about the cards. I was like, give me something else. The card said, go outside. And I would be like, I'm outside all the time. She I walk literally pulled the card I, while we're sitting outside. Yeah, we're outside oh, yeah. at breakfast every right. morning. And I'm like, it's like, go outside. I'm like, I'm already outside right now. I walk my dog every day. I go hiking. I'm a runner. Like, I'm in nature. I have a backyard. Like, I lay out in my yard. I am outside all the time. So I'm like really mad that the cars aren't giving me what I wanted to hear. Mm-hmm. It was exactly what mm-hmm. she needed to Uh-oh. hear. Yeah, so Why is that? first I decided that it meant because of something that someone else mentioned to me was healing happens in nature. So it was like, go be in nature and be not listening to a podcast, you know, not doing oh, something while you're outside. So right. first, that's how I took it. I was like, okay, I'm going to heal from nature. I'm going to go to the beach. I'm going to, you know, meditate on the beach, whatever. Then I went next level and I was like, it's go outside of your comfort zone. Because oh. that's where the healing happens. And that has been true for me in business. If I go outside of my comfort zone, I do something new. Yeah. Starting the podcast so far outside of my comfort zone, right? Yeah. And now it's like all I do. It's like my biggest passion, you know, little things like that. It's always served me to go outside of my comfort zone. And when we are comfortable, we are stagnant. So if you yeah. are in your job and yeah. you are comfortable, you are stagnant. If you are eating healthy, but you are still eating, you know, what I was doing for a while was I would eat healthy all day and then I'd have chocolate cake or cookies at night. But I'm like, <laughs> well, I deserve it because yeah. I was comfortable right? I was stagnant. So it's going outside of our comfort zone. That's where the healing happens. That's where the magic happens, really. And And I've experienced that growth over and over in my life. So now I get the go outside card, but I think it took me like two years to like, like the card. It took her a while. Yeah. We've talked about it. How many times have we talked about that? <laughs> I'm still this? angry about it a little bit. Just it was kidding. really unreal. I mean, there was a group of what, like nine or 10 of us yeah. and we're all sitting around a table every day and everybody's drawing a card that card just kept, kept coming, coming up, up for you. her. Yeah, and really everyone, unreal. It everyone was like else is like, trick. your life is on the right path and you're doing so amazing. And mine was like, go outside. And I was like, <laughs> so, so none bad. of those people at the table could help you with that go outside? No, they... <laughs> They I mean, everyone gave their sweet interpretations, right, but I was right. in an annoyed mode. I was not having it. I was, was. not. <laughs> well, that, that's, I mean, I see clients like that too, who are yeah. like not having it with, you know, certain things I recommend or. Yeah, I was in resistance. Right. Resistance. Right. Yeah. You have to be out of that so that you can receive. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's a big thing with all of this, you know, in terms of healing and ultimately getting what you want in your life, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Whether it's emotional, spiritual, or physical, it's just like, yeah, that's a perfect thing to say is like go outside your comfort zone in all those areas we have to we can't stay comfortable right it will never ever you're right like you said grow and just Mm -hmm. really expand and i think if i had stayed where i was you know i was kind of a housewife and Mm -hmm. living in hancock park and i was so bored so it was but i was so terrified of going outside and learning something new and not going back to something that i had known so but now i'm just so thankful and being able to meet you guys. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> I'm. it's so fun to be able to meet people who do the same thing, who really have the same struggles, mm-hmm. that struggle with just all the same things in different ways and different times in their life. And then to see people, you know, expand and explore and do such incredible things and get to the other side of what they were trying, yeah. climbing up that hill, is the most incredible thing to watch. Well, your story yeah. is so inspiring. She she overcame cancer and then multiple chronic diseases after yeah, that. Yeah. And I, before it. Before it and yeah, after it. Yes. Amazing. Always sick. And now not sick at all. And haven't been for years. So I just wait, knock on wood. Where, <laughs> <laughs> just so lucky. So whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it right at the moment. So. Yeah. And then helping not that others. barriers don't come, like obstacles come up for me all the time. Of course. Though, so. For all of us. Yeah. But you have the tools now. Exactly. Yeah. Break them down. Yeah. Faster. <laughs> 
All right, so how can we join your cleanse programs, yes. find your products, find you online, stalk you on Instagram, all that good stuff? <laughs> Definitely stalk me on Instagram because I'm going to be stalking you. <laughs> I love we'll that. But I'm Alyssa Goodman, E-L-I-S-A Goodman.com. And I have a Facebook page and I have an Instagram, also a website, AlyssaGoodman.com. And on there, I actually wrote a book called Cancer Hacks. It was about what my husband and I did right and wrong in our cancer journeys. I just launched a PDF. It's called autoimmune hacks and it's how I healed and put myself into remission for Hashimoto's hypothyroidism and celiac and you can download it if you sign up for my newsletter as well as I have a seven-day online cleanse that is $29.99 and it's a really easy program it's sort of like my soup cleanse but my soup cleanse we cook and deliver to people in Los Angeles so if you don't live in Los Angeles you can download the seven-day reset and coming up in September I am a affiliate of Zymogen. It's a supplement brand. I don't know if you guys know it. Mm -mm. It's um, really, really beautiful supplement brand. I love supplements. I'm kind of a supplement queen. I've always been taking them and investigating them. Yeah. But Zymogen's only sold to doctors and functional doctors, and they have a six-day I'm going to make it seven, reset program with their supplements that is amazing. So I'm going to be giving away one of those and then actually supporting that person along the way for seven days. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So that will be happening in the beginning of September. Oh, I hope I win. Yeah, you might. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need to do the cooked cleanse. I'll yeah. deliver that to you guys. I'm done. I'm done. It's guys. happening. I'm yeah. so excited. And Leslie, where can everyone find you online? Everyone can find me at Leslie Durso everything on social media and LeslieDurso.com. That's it. All right. <laughs> Thanks, ladies, for being here. I really appreciate thank both you. of you. Yeah, it thank was awesome. You. <laughs> yeah, and thank you so for sharing fun. your story. It was thank so you. inspiring. I loved meeting you. See you next time, Food Heals Nation. Bye. 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 These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to change their status update from hashtag blessed to hashtag OMG even more blessed than yesterday, hashtag loving life. If you experience any of these symptoms, make sure to tweet a Kardashian immediately.